Welcome to Truth Seekers Health Justice. Today we examine the takeover in recent decades of many sectors of health care by Wall Street. Since the 90s, private equity firms, hedge funds, and profiteering corporations have increasingly invested in health-related companies with the goal of later flipping businesses for profit. By the 2020 pandemic, hospital emergency rooms were cited as ground zero for Wall Street greed-driven medicine. To cut costs, many corporate-controlled institutions maintained minimal PPE equipment and supplies. Often, they cut staffing, pay, and benefits, further squeezing nurses, doctors, and other frontline healthcare workers. Emergency room doctors and nurses have been fired for reporting lack of personal protective equipment. 38-year emergency medicine veteran Dr. Robert McNamara, Chair of Emergency Medicine at Temple University School of Medicine and past president of the American Academy of Emergency Medicine, has witnessed the attrition of emergency medicine physicians. McNamara notes that the motives of medicine and the motives of for-profit business are incompatible, compromising professional codes of ethics. Well, the emergency room is really an essential component of the healthcare system. Private equity, by its nature, doesn't belong in healthcare, certainly not in the emergency department. The, the goals of private equity are in opposition to the goals of physicians in medicine. Private equity is about profits and investors. Medicine, physicians are about the care of the patient. Dr. McNamara met with other emergency medicine physicians at a take EM Back Take Emergency Medicine Back Conference in September of 2021, where the main topic was combating the erosion of healthcare by profit hungry corporations. A primary focus was the restoration of physician autonomy to advocate for patients and to counter the exploitation of staff and patients by contract management groups, private equity firms, hedge funds, and insurance companies that seek to milk greater profits. Dr. Rebecca Bernard addressed issues of commodification of medicine. She notes that medicine is increasingly treated as a business or a commodity with patients as sources of profit. I don't think patients understand. They think if you go to a hospital, you're being cared for by maybe an altruistic group of people that is there to take care of their health. And what I think a lot of people don't understand is now medicine has become a business or a commodity. And as a patient, you're there for health care, but you're actually there to make money for this system. And the system is often owned by businesses and there's uh, stocks that are traded. So I think that's the first thing that patients need to understand. By 2020, it was reported that half of all emergency physicians were employed by private equity contract management groups. CMGs, like Team Health and Envision Healthcare, owned respectively by financial titans Blackstone, and KKR and Company. Many emergency physicians have reported the loss of autonomy to ensure proper patient care. Well, and what do we do about it? What's the solution to reverse the trend? Well, it's to try to get all physician organizations to use the existing prohibitions out there to take back medicine. Many states have laws forbidding the corporate practice of medicine that prohibit business entities from owning, investing in, or controlling professional medical practices. In most states, there exist laws to say businesses can't employ physicians. There's the same thing exists for lawyers. You don't want the business interest between the patient and the doctor. You don't want the business interest between the lawyer and the client. Yet in medicine, these have not been enforced they have scams to get around them, and it's sorely needed. In the home state of Envision and Care, Texas, there is very strong prohibitions on corporations practicing medicine. They use doctors as paper owners to create sham professional associations. This was all discussed in a ProPublica article where the, the doctor who's the owner has no idea the finances, all profits are swept. Getting organized medicine to deal with the attorney general's office. This is the illegal corporate practice of medicine filing suit 
Okay, now the American Academy has filed suit four times against corporate groups. We need to do it more. Uh, we won three of those four cases. In the fourth one, we just didn't get standing. The AAEM is the smaller of the groups. Simply proven that you can do something. We filed suit four times. We've been defending doctors left and right who, who get fired. We've been writing to hospital administrators, you know, don't replace the physician-owned group with a corporation. This will be a problem. Advocating, trying to take EM back. Fee splitting. Technically, you're paying a part of your fee for the right to see patients in the emergency department. Again, in every state, that's prohibited. Got to bring that to light. Other specialties are just as bad as we are now. I think we started it. They morphed that into radiology, anesthesia, private equities in the urology, GI. It's, it's just becoming rampant because they say, hey, we made a lot of money on emergency medicine. Like dermatology? Those guys make a lot of money. We can really profit there. By 2020, Wall Street interests had extended their control to nearly every area of health care, along with the buyout of hospitals and closure of hospitals not deemed profitable. Private equity groups had extended investments to hospices, air ambulances, nursing homes, and physician practices. Research regarding nursing homes taken over by private equity firms revealed that patient care declined precipitously. Instead of doctors, corporate executives often decide what treatments will be permitted or even who will get to see a doctor. Equity firms write medical staff contracts to permit corporations to fire physicians who speak up about working conditions that prevent their advocacy for the good of their patients. In order to increase profits, private equity firms do not hesitate to replace board-certified emergency physicians with less qualified practitioners. It can no longer be assured that those visiting an emergency room will see a qualified emergency physician. We have our fire departments standing there ready to take care of fires, but a fire doesn't happen every day. But when they do, you want professionals to respond. The most expensive piece of the equation is what they pay the doctor. Replacing the highest level of education, the board-certified emergency physician, with people that aren't trained in emergency medicine and let alone people that aren't even physicians creates a danger to patients. And it's, it's right there in the cold corporate slideshow that we want to use the cheapest provider available to get the mission done. The patients, they don't know that. The patients walk in and a lot of times they're deceived. They think they're seeing a doctor or they think there's a doctor in charge, and that's not always the case. Patients deserve the best. The first line of the mission statement of the academy is every patient deserves access to a specialist in emergency medicine defined as board certified doctors. And what we're seeing less and less of that. The business interest doesn't want it. There are places where there's no doctor and it says emergency. Now, what, how deceptive is that? You can't be in an emergency department unless there's a doctor present. Shareholder value ethos promoted by Milton Friedman in the 70s and practiced by Wall Street financial firms perpetuates the perverse notion that the sole purpose of corporations is to maximize returns to shareholders at almost any cost while disregarding the greater good of providing value to society. Wall Street tactics milk ever larger profits. Tactics used by private equity firms for squeezing greater profits include hiding billing and payments from doctors, pushing medical staff out of network in order to inflate bills, so-called surprise billing received by patients. ProPublica uncovered hundreds of pages of documents in state court in Houston, revealing how contract management group Team Health marks up medical bills in order to boost profits for investors, charging multiples more than the cost of ER care, and sending excess money to the company, not to treating doctors. McNamara says, we know that these companies are regularly charging nine times the Medicare reimbursement rate, and we know we aren't making that kind of money, but emergency physicians don't know what's actually being billed in our names. Mirroring the practice of many Medicare Advantage plans, contract management groups also practice upcoding to inflate medical bills exaggerating a patient's condition, rating it more serious in order to charge higher costs to the Medicare payer, CMS, or other insurers. 
McNamara states that transparency would eliminate further unethical practices like fee splitting, the practice of splitting a physician's fee with another person or entity, for example, the manager of a staffing company. He notes, many doctors have no idea that they are losing 25 to 30 percent of their fees to a business entity. Observes McNamara, Corporate bean counters also impose quotas, demanding that 50% of patients over 65 years of age seen in the emergency room should be admitted to a hospital. If not, they threaten that doctors will be fired. Many contract management groups purposely employ out-of-network doctors so they can charge extra. Many patients are ambushed by surprise medical bills, often totaling thousands of dollars, when they visit a hospital emergency room that is in their insurance network, but whose doctors work outside the network. Examples of surprise medical bills received by patients. A construction worker experienced upcoding and surprise billing when he received an ER bill of over $4,200 after receiving six stitches in his hand. A woman who experienced a normal pregnancy and delivery received a bill charging her $3,000 for level five emergency care. A line item on the bill for care before delivery rebranded routine care as OBED, an obstetrical emergency, in order to charge higher costs. Elizabeth Rosenthal, editor of Kaiser Health News, reports upcoding has been practiced for decades. In part, it's the typical yet irrational variation we see throughout our private health care system. But there's also something relatively new going on. It's a newfangled billing construct called OBED. That's Obstetrics Emergency Department. It's just the OB triage area that's always been there on the labor and delivery floor. This is really just rebranding routine care and charging more for it, a lot more. In fact, we found documents from medical staffing companies that are very transparent. They said hospitals are, quote unquote, leaving money on the table if they don't charge these ER OB fees and called this an entrepreneurial way of bringing in more money. This is something we call upcoding, and hospitals have been doing it more and more for decades. It's a scary word, and I wish it hadn't uh, entered our vocabulary, but it's considered fraud, and it will get the billing department's attention. In order to fight efforts to outlaw surprise medical billing, the New York Times reported in 2019 that large private equity firms, Team Health and Envision Healthcare, have helped promote a front group called Dr. Patient Unity that has funded a $28 million media blitz by uniting dark money groups to oppose congressional efforts to ban surprise medical billing. The expansion of corporate greed has precipitated a seismic shift in U.S. medicine and left the people paying increased costs for less health care access and worse health care outcomes than any other industrialized nation, as revealed by the Commonwealth Fund annual report in 2021. U.S. life expectancy has decreased and maternal and child mortality has increased over a period of decades. Private equity in medicine inflates profits at the expense of degraded patient health care, fair treatment of workers, or public safety, pushing U.S. health care to a tipping point, rendering the U.S. health care system poorly equipped to redress a pandemic. Currently, private equity firms and other for-profit entities are seeking to take over traditional Medicare with a privatization for profit scheme. Donald Trump opened the door to direct contracting entities, private for-profit middlemen to come between traditional Medicare recipients and their doctors. Instead of halting this program, the Biden administration is rebranding it, the REACH program allowing traditional Medicare recipients to be quietly transferred without their consent or knowledge into the hands of private equity and insurance middlemen who will milk for profit 13 to 30 percent of funds they are paid from the Medicare Trust Fund.
For decades, Washington legislators have been funded by millions of dollars from pharmaceutical, health insurance, and banking industries, plus many more interests that prioritize their bottom line profits over health care for people. Learn more about traditional Medicare as a target for greedy corporations at pnhp.org. Seniors and the disabled are current targets of corporate tactics to milk health care profits, including denial of care, surprise billing, upcoding, or exaggerating patient conditions for profit, and the corporate practice of medicine. It is vital to end the control of corporate money over U.S. health care. Not only is the corporate practice of medicine illegal, it does not conform to our values. This is Michelle Swenson. This has been Truth Seekers Health Justice, a podcast challenging the false corporate narrative surrounding health insurance reform and U.S. health care, recognizing that only an improved Medicare for All insurance is sustainable, capable of providing universal health care for all. Everyone does better when everybody is covered. <laughs>